During the Second World War, the Germans started a range of bombing missions all over Britain. August 25, 1940, the Germans bombed accidentally the city of London for the first time. Here we can see the plaque that was made in memory of these tragic events. It says, on this site, on the 25th August 1940, fell the first bomb on the city of London in the Second World War. So after that started the worst of the bombing raids in London, that uh, is known as the Blitz. It started the 7th September 1940 and uh, it lasted until 11 May 1941. And during this period, uh, London was bombed uh, 71 times. The first deliberate bombing raid was targeted at East London. It is called Black Saturday. It created a larger number of victims and serious damages at the buildings. The East End of London was the one who suffered the most during this period because it was considered to be the Docklands. Destroying the dock, it was more likely to damage the economy and to reduce the production of war materials. Furthermore, this area was the one that supplied the chain for the rest of the country, so it was a way to damage all Britain. Londoners can testify that the area got a lot of changes after the Second World War, and some parts don't even look the same. Volunteers can join uh, the fire party to, to be able to assist uh, injured people during the blitz. This photograph, for example, shows a volunteer in first aid training in the docks. Another example is a woman by the name of Olive Hook. Uh, she also volunteered to join the fire party. Uh, a statement of hers is, we were at the hairdressers and we decided on the toss of the coin to join the AFS. It's as if like it's no big deal for them to join the AFS. We were trained to read maps and to mobilize the fire appliances during the worst of the blitz. We were on duty more or less continuously. Families usually carried the mask around uh, in order to avoid uh, being exposed to toxic gas. And also an ointment was made to smear over the glasses so it wouldn't mist up during uh, like gas exposure. Like this poster is, is an example of the propaganda posters that were kept in the docks. That's exactly what it was trying to say, that um, these projects were being kept secret, civilians were not to know about it, and one of them included this, the pipeline, Pluto. Uh, it is meant to uh, take petrol all the way to France. People living in Dockland found it hard to find shelter because the overground was usually unsafe while the inside was damp and dirty. Uh, however, local authorities built trenches and basements for, as shelters for people, but they preferred the basements because trenches were waterlogged and uh, poorly ventilated. So this here is a simulation of the shelters that they used to use during World War II. So um, basically, while the air raids were happening, they'd have to go underground and protect themselves by staying in a place similar to this one. Uh, so this is a steel council shelter. It was provided by the government for workers who couldn't leave their posts uh, while the bombing occurred. So usually policemen or firemen would come and hide them in the shelter while the bombing was happening. This particular shelter was recovered from Prince Regent's Lane the, after the World War II. Many people in East and South East London were bombed out of their houses, so it was common for them to leave messages on the remaining of the doors saying where they're gonna where they're gonna move to so people can find them. By the way, nowadays it's still possible to find evidence around Tower Hamlets about the damage of the story. St. George Church is located in Cannon Street in London. It was built in, uh, 19, in 17, uh, 14 to 1729. It was uh, designed by Nicholas Hobson. The church was hit by bombs during the Second World War.
on London Docklands in May 1941, when the Second World War began. Clergy were again in short supply and six local parishes were grouped together. The original interior was destroyed by the fire, but the walls and distinctive paper but the tower stayed up. In 1964, a modern church interior was constructed inside the existing walls and a new flat built under each corner tower. This painting was made to commemorate the destruction of interior of this church by incendiary bombing during the Blitz. Outside the church, Immediate, we can find monuments made to remember the people who died during the First and Second World War. History claims that the area of Tower Hamlets was the first to suffer during the event. We had to confirm this information when we found this map. The image we saw was horrifying. The, Im the map depicts the areas which was targeted by the bombers and luckily, we have the option of tracing the bombs during the first night. It is apparent that East London was indeed the first victim of the Blitz. During the Blitz, several bombs that were dropped onto London didn't explode and impact. Uh, instead, uh, several of them exploded later on during the days after the Blitz, and some of them didn't even explode at all. For example, this is one of them. Uh, because many of the bombs were lodged on, underneath Clapp's building, bomb officers had to go and look for them before they exploded so they can dispose of them properly. It is not uncommon for construction workers to find an unexploded bomb while digging. In fact, it's become so commonplace that updated workers' guides now have detailed steps of what to do when they find one. Before the Blitz began, the East End had already suffered great damage by other attacks. However, the Blitz was the main reason for most of the destruction in the area during World War II. After the war was over, parts of the area had been demolished. Other parts underwent remarkable damage, like housing and business premises. It's believed that thousands of homes in the East were annihilated or badly damaged that they were uninhabitable. It took years to revitalize the area and to reconstruct damaged housing and infrastructure. The event was brutal, leaving behind traces in London's soil and in the minds of its people.